Welcome to Plant Your Seed. I'm your host, Fred Ferris. On each episode, we share stories of how ordinary people have transformed their lives. Each story is compassionate, each story is authentic, and each story is a transformation. Here are the stories of the people who are changing our world by transitioning to a plant-based diet. Today on Plant Your Seed, joining us from Brooklyn, New York, we have Danielle Medina. Danielle is the creator of Fit and Play Mama, a fitness, yoga, and nutrition educational resource for adults and children. She also has a plant-based nutrition certificate from T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies and is a certified food for life instructor. Welcome, Danielle. Thanks, Fred, for having me. Thanks for being here on Plant Your Seed. I would love to start with Fit and Play Mama. What is it about fitness, nutrition that you feel is important for adults and children to understand? Yeah, I had a journey of healing myself. I had a lot of health-related issues growing up. So I spent a lot of time reading and learning about fitness and about nutrition. And it really all started at an early age. I, I loved to move. So I was at age five or six in my living room having so much fun by doing dance moves or even just like learning how to do fitness moves. And it made me feel really good. And so that went throughout my life and into my uh, adolescence. I was always moving. But then I was on the flip side, I was super fit, but I had a lot of health related issues. Like I was saying, as I was I was getting older. I was dealing with a lot of gastrointestinal issues, such as bloating and indigestion, constipation. And then in teenager years, when you're so self-conscious, I had a lot of very, very bad acne. It was very painful. Mm. And I was trying to find solutions to that. And when I went to college, I decided to study nutrition. I felt like that was mm. something I was very passionate about. And my professor one day came over to me and said, you know, you can heal your skin issues through plant, through food, not plant-based food, but through food. So that really sparked my interest even more because I went to college. I was in Bro- I, from Brooklyn, New York. So I went to Brooklyn college mm-hmm. and studied a lot. And, but the main focus was at that time was the food pyramid, right? So Mm -hmm. you still had a lot of dairy and meat in that. And so I can continue to eat the way that I was eating, but it was really after fast forwarding forward all the way to my daughter. Now she's almost, almost eight. When she was uh, born, I I realized that I had to really dive deeper into my plant-based journey. And so I found this amazing nonprofit organization called Plant Powered Metro New York. Mm -hmm. They are a nonprofit organization that helps help people to overcome chronic illnesses and diseases. And so I was very intrigued and I wanted to learn so much about that. So while I was teaching my clients and while I was doing everything that I thought was healing for myself and for my clients, I learned that plant-based foods was was a huge part of that solution to my to my health related issues. And once I became more uh, educated in it, I realized that I needed to share that with my clients. So I took the T. Colin Campbell nutrition, uh, plant-based nutrition certification. I did the forks over knives cooking class. And and then I became a food for life instructor by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Mm -hmm. And I just kept going more and more into it. And so Fit and Play Mama basically was born from just all of these, all of the things that I was dealing with that I wanted to share with my own clients. That's Mm -hmm. how it all really started. Let's talk about your vegan journey. You mentioned some gastrointestinal issues that you had. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. So even at, at an early age, I had suffered from a lot of, especially just feeling constipated all the time and feeling very bloated. 
And so my parents, I mean, I, I love them and they, they tried their best to like any other parent is you just feed your, your children food. And I come from a background, so there wasn't any traditional foods per se. I am a biracial person, so half black, half white. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't like we would eat Italian food all the time or we would eat soul food all the time, or it was just a, a combination of all different types of foods. But there was a lot of cheese. When I think back, I was eating a lot of cheese and, mm -hmm. and I was probably eating a lot of sugary foods. And from that, I started again, like as I got older, I would start reading a lot about what foods help with digest with just going to the bathroom, being regular. Mm -hmm. So I realized fiber always was that big word that I would find in all of my studies and fiber, fiber. And where do you get fiber from? Well, the plant based foods. Mm -hmm. Well, when I realized that I started to really increase my vegetables and my fruits, and I even at that point wasn't sure about the whole grains and the legumes at that point, and this is still like when I was in my early teens or maybe early 20s, but when I had my daughter is when, like I said, I dived right into it and I realized, oh, okay, so plant-based foods actually heal many people from many different chronic illnesses and diseases, how I, I think I should try this. I really think I'm going to be a hundred percent and it's going to be for 30 days. I'm going to be a hundred percent. Once that 30 day mentorship that I did with the plant powered Metro New York, I realized, Oh, this is exactly what my body needs. This is now my skin is glowing. I am regular now. I don't have to feel bloated anymore. It was a great feeling. And I really just feel like I, I wanted to I wanted to share that it was this this passion now that I had about it. So that's how my went into veganism from there. You mentioned that you had acne as a child or as a teenager. Do you feel that the cheese is or the dairy that you had as a child was something that was affecting it? Oh, definitely, because now that. I've done so much research and read so many different books, but that dairy, well, it comes from milk and there's a lot of hormones in the milk mm -hmm. and it's a, affecting your own hormones and it's just a high saturated fat. And I noticed that once I started cooking with no oils, my skin even became clearer because of that. So I definitely see the connection. There's always that connection with food and, and food and mood, right? So even just feeling so much better. So I feel like I, my brain, I used to have brain fog and I talk about that a lot with my clients that it's, if brain fog is, is really a, 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 it makes you feel like you can't think properly, right? Mm -hmm. So you're always trying to search for words and you can't think of them. And being young and having that, that was not a good feeling. Right. So once I transitioned to plant-based and I realized that, okay, now my thoughts are clear and now I can actually, I, I can, you know, speak without ha having to like say, Oh, you, you know what I mean? Right. You know what I'm talking about? So it was a, it was a huge 180 with my health. And I, and that was just a great feeling. Since you became vegan, have you noticed any changes besides the acne and obviously the clarity, physically or mentally? Yes, yes. So energy, right? My energy went right up. I, I kind of joke sometimes that I do feel like the Energizer Bunny because I just keep going. I keep feeling that I, even if I don't have maybe enough sleep one night, if I, and I know sleep is a very huge part about health and mm -hmm. the life, the lifestyle wheel, right? So, but even if I don't have enough sleep, I still feel like the next day, I don't need to grab coffee to, mm. to bring up my energy. Just have my great bowl of oatmeal with my, with fruits and some nuts and seeds. And that in itself wakes me up. Having a full glass of water in the morning is, again, it, it wakes me up. So I never look for caffeine. So that's one thing is the energy. And then the other thing is since I work out, I'm a fitness instructor, I do teach yoga. 
I don't have those aches and pains that maybe I necessarily had before. I, I do still get sore if I work out, but I have a quick recovery. Mm-hmm. So it's it's definitely I see that, and 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 just in overall, just in general, I feel like my mood is much more positive. I feel like I I, I feel like I have a more positive outlook in life rather than when I was eating not so more traditional, uh, maybe standard American diet. I just felt like a little bit lower in energy and just a little bit more, not say I wasn't one who suffered from depression ever, Mm -hmm. but just had maybe some like feelings of that. So yeah, it feels really great to, to be living like this. One thing that interests me is this positive outlook that you feel. Where do you feel that that comes from? That's a really great question. I think it comes from knowing that I'm eating in a way that's very sustainable for our planet. I feel like I'm doing no harm to animals or I'm, I feel just really, I feel connection now with just my, where I am, where as before, it was it was more of a heavier feeling eating a lot of heavy foods where we know is like eating processed and fatty foods and oily foods make you actually physically feel heavy but and mentally feel heavy you feel like after you eat a very oily fried food dish right you you want to go to sleep after mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't want to be produ- like necessarily very productive because that's very taxing on the body. The body has to process that food. Whereas plant-based foods, when you're eating it, it's readily digestible. You're metabolizing all of the nutrients. It's, it's nutrient dense food rather than, and, and low in calories, right? So you are burning those calories faster. So when I was eating the other way, I would feel more sluggish. Mm. And I, you know, I didn't know why you just feel like, well, that's the way you're supposed to feel Mm -hmm. after you eat food, right? You're not supposed to feel energized. I mean, as much, but, but now I know that. And that's why I feel so compelled to show people that that's actually not the way you're supposed to feel after you have a full meal. How does it feel to live in alignment with your values? feels great. <laughs> it feels great. It feels liberating. I always feel like I want to share a lot of what I'm going through so that people know that they're not alone in their in their journey because most most of my clients who come to me have some sort of chronic illness or they're just feeling like they have they can't lose those 10 pounds, those 10 extra pounds that they've been, they've been dieting so much. And now they really want some help. And I, I always tell them that I, this is a journey, this is a lifestyle journey, right? Mm. So I'm here to help you in any way possible. And if you're looking to completely transition into plant-based food, that that's great. If not, we can definitely add more plant powered type of um, foods or meals into onto your plate Mm -hmm. but i want them to know that i will meet them where they are but i have to i have to say to them but i'm going to be honest if you're going to go a little slower you're going to have slower results right if you are fully 100 percent into this even if it's just for uh, you know 30 days let's just try it and see how you feel and if you you know you want to change back you can but I know once they do that 30 day plant-based nutrition lifestyle, they're going to feel, they're going to feel amazing. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really hard to go back. But if they do want to go slower, I'm more than happy to help them. I just let them know that this is, it will happen. It's going to take, it's going to be at a slower pace. What is the best way for people to start a plant-based journey? Mm Mm-hmm. I think first 
is to know your why, right? To know what you're doing. Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Really think about it. Is it because you want to have a more healthier lifestyle? Are you looking to some, some of my clients, they want to be around for their grandchildren, right? Mm -hmm. So they want to feel really healthy and just some, some of them just want they they just feel like they're stuck in a rut and they can't lose weight and they, you know, they go through all these different diets and they just really feel like it's, they, they don't know what else to do. So I think if you start with knowing that why, knowing that and writing it down, journaling mm -hmm. it, putting it and reading it every day that, okay, I know why I'm doing this. I know why I need to continue this. I know that this is going to be something that's going to have results that I'm looking for. Then that's going to push you further into your journey rather than me just saying, okay, this is what you have to do. I'm I'm just going to be your guide, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be your guide. You know, you're going to be, you'll be Luke Skywalker. I'm going to be Obi-Wan, you know, <laughs> however we want to like put it, right? So I, I'm just here to relay all the, the information, all the knowledge that I've learned in this field to get you there the fastest way possible and, and the, in a way that it's going to feel good for you. Um, this journey is something where we do need support because when you leave your house, we are bombarded by standard American diet. Mm -hmm. Lots of lots of advertisements everywhere, lots of food everywhere that's very based in 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 meat and very um it, it's it's not something where we can just feel like, oh, we can go into any store and just, you know, buy anything. So it does take some time when you realize like, okay, you have to do a little bit of preparation. But once you get that, it's very easy because now you know what to do. Now you understand, you know, where to, what the, what the social situations are going to look like. And then you just, it doesn't even bother you anymore because you know exactly what to do. Is your daughter, is she vegan and your husband? Yes. So I would say for them too, they are probably like 95% because my husband, yes, wh whatever I cook, he, he enjoys it. He really is. He, he really enjoys like a lot of the foods that I've, I, I'm making and, and he really likes that, but he will, if he is, uh, he's a, he's a DJ. So mm -hmm. he works at, he works with weddings and at weddings and, um, whatever, sometimes like if I don't prepare his food, he may eat. The only thing he eats that, um, is not plant-based is fish, right? So that's the only thing. And then my daughter is pretty much plant-based. We're plant, everyone's plant-based at home. Mm -hmm. But if we go to a gathering or if we go to a birthday party, I don't want to feel, make her feel isolated. And the, the funny thing is that because she has been eating like this for, for, pretty much almost her whole life that if she does have that cake right or something sweet she'll say this was this was good but it, it's really sweet mm. <laughs> you know, or, where's my water where you know like she'll try to grab her water really quickly because she realizes that this is very very we don't eat that kind of sweet so it's okay you have to find a balance right especially with kids you don't want to make them feel like they can't do something. You want them to experience it. Why don't you experience this? Uh, the only thing we don't, and she's never had, has um, she's never tasted meat, but she's not, she's not even interested in meat because she doesn't even know what it tastes like, mm -hmm. you know? But pizza and, you know, sweets like that, we're lean, lenient on it when it's out and we're with uh, different family or friends. So it's, it's okay every once in a while. I feel that that is very important because children, they have enough pressure uh, with their friends and everything like that. I have three daughters and they're right now they're teenagers and you run into that problem. Like you go to a birthday party. Do you want to be the one that's asking if the cake is vegan? If the cupcake is vegan, do you not want to eat the, the pizza or whatever? No, you want to fit in. So, I mean, we're very... Exactly. 
we're very loose as far as um, not being strict or stringent with them. We have them understand what their choices are and why they are making those choices. But at the same time, it's something that you have to be flexible with as a parent, because if you're too strict, in my experience, they go the other way. And that's probably something that you don't want. I always think of it as um, they can make that choice and then they can basically get back on the wagon when they come home and then, you know, they keep going. And it's, again, it's a journey. It's not, it's not a destination. You're just going to that place and, and just getting there. And that's so true. That's so true. And like you said, kids, if they're eating like this 95% of the time, they're going to know their body is going to figure it out. They're going to realize that this is not, and, and you don't feel good after eating certain foods. So they already have that education happening and we just have to keep supporting them in that way. So it, you never know what's going to, what, you know, they turn into teenagers and then, you know, but we just have to just support them and let them know that we always have really good food for them whenever they want to eat it. Yeah. And I, I noticed that my daughter, one of my daughters is at school. And when she comes home, she is just like so excited to just eat the normal vegan food that she's so used to, as opposed to trying to find vegan food wherever she is. It's a little more challenging. I guess my curiosity is, as a parent, what was that transition like for your family and for you? I mean, here you are, you, you go, oh, hey, plant-based diet's the way to go. And what, take us back to that moment when you came home and you told your <laughs> husband, he, what did he have to say? He, he didn't seem excited at first. He was <laughs> like, wait a minute, we're not going to eat scram Because he's actually, he's pescatarian, right? So he wasn't eating meat as well. So meat was never an issue. Mm -hmm. But we were still having eggs and we were still having butter. And this was in 20, so I actually became fully plant-based in 2021. And so my daughter was about five at that time. And so it was like, oh, okay, this is how we're going to eat. I'm like, yeah, let's just try it. I mean, I, I'll make some tofu scramble. It looks pretty good. I think I'm going to mm -hmm. be able to make something like that. And so, you know, trial and error. You know, some dishes were really good. Mm -hmm. Some dishes were not so good. <laughs> and I heard it, you know, I was like, what are we eating? You know, but you that's how anything starts. You mm -hmm. have to just start somewhere. And you're going to sometimes flop on certain meals and you don't have to throw that meal away necessarily may <clears throat> some of them you might have to <laughs> mm. but you may need to just adjust the the spices the taste you know just it's more taste mm -hmm. but i feel like you have to learn through the journey there you, you make the decision you know your why mm -hmm. and my why was that at that time, I, I was, I turned 40 and I was like, oh my goodness, I need to make sure I'm going to make, be healthy for the rest of my life. And so I said, I'm going to become plant-based and this is how I'm going to start cooking. I'm going to, I'm not going to cook with oil anymore. And I'm going to just make sure that every meal is super healthy and we're getting our greens and we're getting all whole grains and so it took a little bit of time for everybody to adjust. But actually, when I think back, it wasn't that bad. It really mm. wasn't. Like now, every everything we eat at home is completely plant-based. And I get the thumbs up, you know, for a lot of my dishes. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> I, I know that uh, when I switched over, I just started with like bananas and peanut butter. That was like where I started. It wasn't a great start. I wouldn't recommend it. But, but uh, as far as your as far as your daughter, well, actually, as far as your husband, how did he take it though? I mean, like I know that when I came home, my wife was like, "Okay, yeah, that's that's cool. That's something I'm interested in too." How did he take it? I think he he understands. He knows why the he knows the why he understands the importance of eating plant-based foods he t really does i think for him though he still wants to just have in the enjoyment of like when he goes out 
to not be super strict Mm -hmm. where for me it's i don't even think of it as being super strict anymore i just feel like this is just how i eat Mm -hmm. so but i but i understand that and before i would i would feel like why aren't you 100 percent plant-based like i am you know Mm -hmm. but i realized that it's okay. I mean, he practically is. I mean, he really is. And it's funny because ever since I started cooking plant-based, he's, he always he says now, like, you know, a lot of his uh, friends who know known him over the years, they're like, wow, your skin looks so good. I'm mm. like, that's the plant-based eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Same. it is. That's what it is. All right. But, Right. So he, he oh, absolutely understands it. And he thinks it's great. And I think that for him, he just likes to have a little bit of just like that, the old things that he would have, but just very on, like on a few occasions, never like a lot. So, and I, and I respect that. I really do. I, you have to, when you're in a relationship and you're eating, I mean, he could be eating completely opposite than me, mm-hmm. right? He could be eating, you know, meat and potatoes right but he's not so he's actually very supportive in that way and you just have to uh, when you're with somebody you have to really understand that if you're going to make a relationship work you have to love them no matter like how it is you know but you want to make sure that you have um, a sense of respect for each other right so Mm -hmm. he respects how i eat and i respect how he eats and then we always come together and that's that's the beauty of being in a relationship. Now, what is it about food and fitness that makes you so passionate? Yeah, I love I love to move. I feel almost if I don't move every day, I feel like stiff. I feel like I didn't get this energy out that I think that a lot of us when we were younger, we felt we had that as kids, you, you know, you have mm-hmm. kids, they they were bouncing off the walls. And it's natural when you get older, that slowly slows down, because now we're, most of us have jobs where we're sitting at a desk, mm-hmm. eight hours of the day. So now what used to be normal of movement has now it's stagnant, and you're sitting all the time, right? So to transition, we need to do daily movement every single day, whether it's for five minutes or if it's for 50 minutes. All I want is that for, for everyone to be moving. So mm-hmm. if you feel like you need to put a timer on your phone, put the timer on your phone for every hour. I need to get up. I need to move maybe for 10, 15 minutes, sit back down and continue my work. And then with the nutrition part kind of the same thing right so if you know what the proper fuel you need for your body and when you start eating that way you're gonna get energized again Mm -hmm. if i i can tell you when i even if i eat so eating plant-based is very is it's it's just so amazing it really really keeps my body going but even certain foods, like if I'm eating at, say, a vegan restaurant, sometimes it could be very oily. Mm-hmm. And it, sometimes it could be very, uh, a little, sometimes they could be a little greasy, too. So if I eat certain foods, I can already I feel that sluggishness a little bit again, mm-hmm. even just from that. So you have to know your body and you have to know your your limits on how to... Like, you know, you, you may want to, okay, let, let's go out and eat for a little bit, but you know, okay, I can't have too much of this type of food because I'm going to feel not good afterwards. And then that's how you just kind of constantly gauge yourself. Am I feeling good? Am I feeling energized? Did I move enough today? Mm-hmm. We should be always moving. Even my clients that are in their seventies and there, and, and even my dad who's in his eighties, I'm like, you have to move every day. I don't Mm -hmm. age does not matter. If you can move, you have to move every single day. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Now, what is the most rewarding part of what you do? I think just changing people's lives, making them feel alive again, making them feel that I have this one client. She was on 
she was on cholesterol medication and she did a, she, I was her mentor and she did, she went plant-based mm-hmm. and she was able to lower her cholesterol medication and she is doing amazing. She lost weight. I saw her last year and she was just thriving mm-hmm. and that made me feel so good because again, I helped, I helped her through that I helped guide her through the journey that she is continuing right and we all are continuing so just seeing that makes me realize that I'm on the right path because that's what I want to do I want to affect people in a way that is going to make them feel that they can continue with their mission whatever their mission is in life how did you get the courage to start Fit and Play Mama? In 2020, I was home like many other people during the pandemic. And I was teaching a lot of classes in person before that. And I was an independent cr- contractor. So I was teaching yoga and fitness classes for adults and children and teaching nutrition workshops. Then I realized that I wanted to continue and I had to basically step up and create my own business. So I chose to name my business Fit and Play Mama because I love fitness. I'm very playful in the way I approach my classes and Mm -hmm. I'm also a mom. So I wanted to appeal to many people in the sense that I'm kind of like, this person who is going to push you to even if you have a family, even if you're busy, that I'm going to show you easy ways, easy tips on how to continue to stay fit and healthy, even if you're locked, you know, even if you're in your house and you can't go anywhere, here's some tips. Mm -hmm. So that's how it really started. Then I started to realize, you know what, I think people are going to really like this. So I just then started making videos with my daughter, showing us doing fitness at home or fitness out in a park or fitness at the playground. And we started making meals together. So I video us doing meals, very Mm -hmm. simple meals where she was actually doing the, putting all the ingredients in and making it. And people really liked it. They really found, my followers really found that this was really great information and that they they would be like, thank you so much. I didn't even realize that I could do this with my child. I didn't realize that my child could help me in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that I can do Pilates with my daughter or my son, you know, in the, the room with me. But you can, you, if you're always modeling to them, if they see you constantly working out, taking care of yourself, eating well, they're going to just follow most of the time because you're just being a role model to them. So you sh- you really don't need to necessarily always separate it. Like, oh, I can't work out because my, ch- I'm, my, my child's with me. You know, actually say, come on, we're going to do a little 15 minute workout. Come join me. Mm-hmm. And these are the steps we're going to do. You ready? And then just do it. Or, you know, hey, I'm going to make some a meal to, today. Um, you think you could come and help me over here and just chop up some of those vegetables and then we're going to make this. And hey, why don't you taste this? What does this taste like to you? Constantly engaging them, constantly bringing them in with you. And then for my clients who don't have children, they just like watching. <laughs> they just mm-hmm. like, you know, seeing the fun that we have because it really is. I try to, like I said, I always try to keep it very playful. Because life is so serious. Mm-hmm. Why not just make it playful for us? We're, we're all here together. We're all experiencing this planet and, you know, this, the, the beauty in it. So, and there's a lot of things that are happening in the world that we can't necessarily control, but we can control the environment in our home. Mm-hmm. So that's what I wanted to show. What is one thing that is really exciting for you, either with Fit and Play Mama or with your life right now? I am getting a lot of opportunities now to teach and to make programs. So I'm creating curriculums and programs for different nonprofit organizations that are looking for wellness 
programs and I am working with seniors now in the senior centers and with children. It's becoming amazing. It, it really is. And I really am seeing that people are, is a, there's a high need for, for this type of program mm -hmm. that people are looking for solutions. People are, they, they do want to be healthier. They, they do want to take care of themselves. They just don't necessarily know. And they also feel like it might be so it's hard. Oh, it's it might, maybe it's hard to do this. Mm -hmm. So that's when I come in and I'm saying, nope, it's not going to be hard. You're going to have fun. You're going to enjoy this. You're going to feel good. And you're going to see because the results are going to show. And people are really responding very well to that. What cookbook, book, or documentary have you gifted or recommended to someone transitioning to a plant-based diet? Yeah, there's so many, but I definitely would say Works Over Knives and Game Changers. So, so good. And what the, what the health is so good. Ah, there's just so many. Um, there's books that I really enjoy. is Fiber Fuel by Dr. B. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's just so many. And I, I feel that now, especially being in New York City, especially being in New York, in New York City, there's this plant-based movement happening now our, our mayor's plant-based mm -hmm. and in there is just like a lot of opportunity here in new york city and i hope that that's happening and shifting around the country and even around the world but there there's just so many different resources now that are out there and i'm excited to, to jump into it as well so we'll see what what i uh can develop in next year maybe there might be some sort of book i don't know but we'll see we'll see <laughs> and finally can you give me one word to describe how you felt before you were vegan and one word to describe how you feel now that you are vegan okay so one word to describe how i felt before i was vegan i would say cloudy mm -hmm. kind of cloudy and then the one word that i would describe myself now after becoming vegan is is clear mm -hmm. or clarity clear and you know as i said before that it really is so true that i feel clear after becoming plant-based i really it has opened my mind to possibilities but not only through health but just the drive to bring this forward into the world. Whereas before I just felt like not unsure or not maybe as confident, but now I feel very confident in what I'm doing because I see the benefits and this is not something that I can make up. And, and I know from other watching other people who are, had transitioned to plant-based the same kind of feeling the same thing that they're talking about mm -hmm. so something must be amazing in this type of lifestyle and that is just what i'm trying to do i'm just trying to be another guide in this amazing journey as we all know and and yeah i really hope to see what else is going to happen in the future i feel really good and confident about it such a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. What is the best way for people to follow you and support you on the web or social media? So they can go to my website, Fit and Play Mama. That's F I T N P L A Y Mama M A M A dot com. And you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn at Fit and Play Mama. All right. Thanks again, Danielle, for being on Plant Your Seed. Thank you, Fred. Hope you are inspired by this story. And remember, it's never too late to plant your seed. Links to everything we talked about on the podcast can be found on Instagram at plant.yourseed in the show notes tab in the bio. If you enjoyed the show, remember to leave us a review. And until next time, thank you for listening.